underneath this heading, I'd like you to write the following. following. We know how to solve simultaneous equations And I'd like you to help me finish the sentence. We, we've learned yesterday, we reviewed quickly, one way, one method, one strategy for solving simultaneous equations. It involved doing what? It involved drawing, right? We had to graph them, and then what we were searching for, the solution of this simultaneous equations was what? What was it? Yeah, where the two, where the two lines meet. It's a point, yeah? That guy right there, okay? So we know how to solve simultaneous equations. We would call this method the graphical method because you got a graph, right? So we know how to do it graphically. The solution is the intersection point. You don't need to have that on your diagram. You can just write it as um, a separate sentence. But since I've got one, I'm just going to label it along there, okay? Now, this is all well and good when number one, your equations are nice and convenient and neat. And number two, when you've got like a grid on there and it's easy to read off, oh, like where is that thing, okay? But I can very easily come up with equations that make this impossible. For example, let's call this guy, I don't know, uh, y equals two, oh, let's make it three sevenths x plus uh, five over 11. And what might this be? I don't know, maybe, 181 over mm, 17x minus 79. Okay, now, I just made up these numbers. But think about this for a moment, right? See how these figures here are all really messy, awkward numbers, right? Because they're messy, awkward numbers, when they meet, they're going to meet at a messy, awkward number. And even if you've got like very fine grid lines, you're never going to be able to accurately measure, just with your eyes, where the intersection point is. So this graphical method has this big glaring hole, which is that it's inaccurate. Okay? So underneath this, I want you to make a little subheading, which is... The algebraic method. Okay, so I said before that uh, the graphical method is lovely when you've got nice, nice, neat, simple numbers, but it's just kind of a disaster. It's just completely inadequate if, all we use, if we have these messy numbers here. Hi, who are you looking for? Thanks. Uh, okay, I will, um, I'll send them. Thank you. There you go, man. I think it's now. Oh wait, no, hold on. Period five? Is it period five? I don't know. Which is later. I don't know why you're getting it now. Period five. This is period five. Yeah. Oh, it is. Sorry. <laughs> uh, lunch already passed. You go. This can go. Might as well go through here. Do we bring up bags? Doesn't say. It's pretty early in the lesson. I think it's fine. Oh, no. Oh damn! I got it. Bye. <laughs> If it's an important meeting, you don't want to turn up with chocolate in your mouth? Just saying. Okay. <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, okay, sorry guys, let's, uh, let's regain our focus. These numbers are not messy, so we could solve this graphically, but I'm going to use these nice neat numbers because they'll just be easier for our brain at the moment. Okay? How can we solve these without ever going anywhere near a graph? Here's how. There's a few different ways. The first thing we're going to do, and I'd like you to do this with me, is we need some way to talk about these equations separately, because they're not the same equation. So I'm going to label them. 
and I do it like so. I literally have a line going across to a little one in a circle, and a line going across to a little two in a circle. So this is equation one, equation two. Okay. Now I can do a variety of things to bring equation one and two into contact with each other, to get them to talk to each other a little bit. Right? For example, see how the first equation says y equals? And then the second equation also says y equals, right? Well, what that means is, if this is equal to y, and this is equal to y, well, doesn't it stand to reason that these things should be equal to each other? Like they're both equal to y, yeah? The way that we would call this is, we are going to equate 1 and 2. Okay? So you can see I put these numbers in circles because we don't do this very often. That way you know I'm talking about the equations, not just the number one and the number two. So if I equate one and two, I get x minus one and two x plus three. Well, this is a simple equation just like any other I've solved. What could I do? Would someone like to give me a suggestion of what I could do to get toward a solution? Just give me one step. Yeah, Brian. Okay, I'm going to do something with the x's, but I'm not going to move anything anywhere. What operation could I do that would make it look like some x's moved? Yeah, Arib. So, so add, oh, minus x. Okay, I will, I will subtract an x from both sides. Um, that means this one's gone, so it just leaves me with negative 1. And on the right-hand side, that leaves me with a single x plus 3. I'll keep going. I want x on its own, so the operation that's left to do is... Subtract 3. That leaves me with this. Do you agree? Is that okay? Now, look at what we've got here. We have an x value, okay? From what we know about solving things algebraically, uh, sorry, graphically, we usually get an x value by looking for it. We're like, oh, I think it's about there or, or wherever it happens to be. But we don't just want an x value. If we want to know where that is, we also need a y value, you know, whatever, whatever that happens to be, okay? So how will I find that? Okay. I'm going to take this x value, I might as well write it on the left hand side, and I'm going to substitute it back into one of these equations. Okay. Which one? Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask this side of the room to take this value here and substitute it into equation 1. And then I'd like this side of the room to substitute the same value but into equation 2 instead. Okay, so wherever you see an x, you're going to put negative 4 instead. Can you go ahead and do that for me? Oh, I'm talking about the same. Yeah, I'm talking about it. Okay, hands up. Who's already done the substitution? Got an answer? Hands up straight. Hands up straight. Okay, thank you. Hands down. All at once, the answer is... Now... Whichever side you were, you got the same answer, didn't you? Now let's think about why this is the case. This is really important. Put your pen down for a second because you need to watch this bit. We all got the same answer. Here is why. You know how we're solving simultaneously? And what that means is the solution is the intersection point. What that means is this point that we find, it's not just on this line or on this line, it's on both lines. Right? That means it should satisfy both equations. That's so important, let me say it again. Okay? The point we're looking for, the solution, by definition, it's on both lines. That's why it's the intersection point. Okay? If the point's on both lines, then this value satisfies both equations. Does that make sense? Because these equations are, in a real sense, they are these lines. It's just, well, not these particular lines. They are lines, you can visualize them, okay? In fact, let's now do that quickly. Can you please just draw me a rough version? Don't worry, don't even use your ruler this time. I just want to get a, an intuition. Draw a rough Cartesian plane. And let's think about what these lines would look like. x minus 1 and 2x plus 3. x minus 1. I think it'll look something like that, right? If that's 1 there, okay? 2x plus 3, what would that look like? 1, 2, 3, there's the y-intercept. What does the 2 tell you? It's going to be a bit steeper than the other one. Okay, so it'll be something like this. 
Okay, now we're not solving this graphically, so it's not important for it to be precise. But all I want to confirm is, hey, look at that intersection point. That's, that's what the solution is. Does this look like it matches reasonably with that intersection point? Negative 4, negative 5. It looks good to me. It's in the right quadrant. Even the scale is reasonably okay, and I just did it by freehand. Okay, so graphically we can confirm what we found algebraically. Okay?